Today, in a special edition of Drive Labs, we're taking you on an autonomous drive, and we're going to show you the pieces of software we're building, running together in the car, enabling the vehicle to drive itself. Our pilot is Dennis. I'm your co-pilot. Let's go. We are now on the road and we'll be engaging autonomy once we get on the highway. But before we do that, I want to show you our perception functionality already in action in the car. And perception is basically what enables the car to see. We take in raw sensor data and translate it into semantic understanding of the world, of the scene that we're in. So take a look at that happening on our front camera. We have drive net detecting obstacles, the bounding boxes around the cars. We have weight net detecting the intersection, the yellow box around everything. WaitNet also detecting traffic lights and traffic signs, and LightNet is classifying traffic lights stayed correctly as red. We also have sign classification going on using SignNet. At the same time, DriveNet is detecting pedestrians in the cyan bounding boxes on the far side of the intersection. We also have open road net tracing out the free space around obstacles on the scene. And on top of that, we have our object tracking from frame to frame. You see the track IDs on the top of each bounding box. We also have our camera-based DNN distance estimation running. So you see the distance in meters displayed at the bottom of each box. Clear sight net is also running in the background, assessing whether and how well the cameras can see in our four camera surround perception setup on our embedded AGX platform. And all of this rich perception functionality is what our planning and control software is going to use to execute the autonomous driving maneuvers that you're about to see. Okay, we're now getting onto the highway on-ramp and entering the coverage area of the high-definition map that we're going to use today for the car to create a route plan that we're going to follow. And basically, the car will localize itself onto the map and create a lane plan that tells us when it needs to stay in the lane, when it needs to take a lane change to stay on the route, and when it needs to take a highway interchange. The second thing that's about to happen is that we're going to transition out of human-driven mode, driven by Dennis, into autonomous machine driving mode, where the car is going to drive us. So taking a look at the top right of our screen, we see automatic cruise control, ACC, and lane keep, LK. When they're both off, Dennis is driving. When they come on, the car will be driving us. So here we go, taking a look at the screen. Lane keep is now on, ACC is now on, we're driving fully autonomously. Dennis's hands are off the wheel, but staying close for safety reasons. And we are officially starting our autonomous drive. Okay, we are now in full autonomy. The car is keeping us in the lane. Let's take a look at how that is happening. That thick green center path that you see, that is the Path Perception Ensemble, Drive Labs Episode 1. And it is computing not just the center path and the edges of our lane, but also the center path and edges of the left adjacent lane and the right adjacent lanes. And we visualize that with different colors. So green is our ego lane, left adjacent is red, and right adjacent is blue. Next, we need to determine which of the obstacles belong in which of these different lanes. The way that we do that, we have the bounding box detections from DriveNet. We have free space boundary detections from Open RoadNet. Where those two meet is what is called the object fence. And that fences off where that object is in space. We combine this object fence information with lane geometry information from Path Perception Ensemble, and this now enables us to do obstacle to lane assignment. The car fence takes on the color of its assigned lane. We are now approaching our first maneuver, first autonomous maneuver. The car is letting us know that based on our route plan, and we need to take a lane change to the right. Here we go. The car is performing a surround radar and camera lane change safety check and we are now moving from lane keep mode into speed adaptation in order to figure out the speed profile to get into the next lane and into lane change mode, moving from the center path of the current lane into the center path of the target lane. And we have now completed that lane change. Okay, we're now getting ready for our second set of autonomous driving maneuvers, going straight into the highway interchange onto 280. Now, although we know this is coming up, based on localization to the HD map, we will not be using any clues from the map to, to actually navigate this maneuver. We are handling this using path perception ensemble only. Lane handling mode on the screen is split because this is a lane split interchange. 
And now the challenge is going to be for Path Reception Ensemble to maintain confidence throughout this interchange because it has both high curvature and high grade. But take a look at Path Reception Ensemble. It's still green, meaning it has high confidence that it's navigating this difficult, curved, graded highway interchange correctly. We are now coming up on our next set of autonomous driving maneuvers to get onto Highway 87. The first thing that we're going to need to do is another lane change to the right to get into the correct exit lane, and then handle another lane split highway interchange, followed by another lane change under time pressure. So here we go. First lane change, you see lane handling mode go into speed adaptation, finding the lateral path into the next lane. Ensemble going from red to green as it's landing in the target lane, finding confidence that it's found the lane. We have just handled another lane merge and we are going to have a little bit of grade profile changes in the road coming up. Right there, this is why it's important to have calibration continuously running in the car. We see the lane handling mode move into split mode. The car needs to correctly take that lane split to the right to not unintentionally exit the route. Path Perception Ensemble is now navigating another high curvature interchange. We see the center path staying green. And we are now moving right into that third maneuver. This is a lane change under time pressure. We don't have a lot of time here to move from the right lane into the next adjacent left lane in order to not incorrectly exit from our planned route. So here we go. We're switching from keep mode into speed adaptation into change mode and landing in the center of the target lane to complete that set of maneuvers. And we are now going to complete the rest of our autonomous route and head back to the garage. And we're back. We hope you enjoyed our autonomous drive today and enjoyed seeing how our software is enabling the car to drive itself. For any questions, reach out to us through the comment section, check out our other Drive Labs videos, and we'll see you next time.